Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destinations, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. We begin by checking in on two of our tourists, Thylord Root and Mr. Doobie, on their way to Saturn. And we need to update Tag Life Support's water recycling situation. I have a water recycler on there, but occasionally it doesn't really catch up in the in the Tag Life Support dialogue. You can see they're actually going past Saturn orbit and coming back around. I don't know. I don't remember why that is, but that ended up being how they were going. Anyway, with those two seemingly all right, I decided to proceed with the Mars window. We were in the middle of it, and I needed to send some fuel over to Mars. Uh, first, we have a tub of UDMH and NTO here, and that is pushed by some little frigate engines, I think, in that case. The, fr the Briz and frigate engines are sort of close to each other, but the frigate ones have more ignitions. I initially put a Raptor vacuum on this stage, but then switched to this nuclear engine. It's the same amount of thrust, by the way, which gives you an idea. Well, it's a little bit more thrust for a nuclear engine, but it gives you an idea how much more structural mass you need for those uh, nuclear thermal rocket engines. And they're huge compared to the normal liquid combustion engines. So, yeah, that is a downside to them. Uh, an upside is, of course, the better ISP, but we have to balance that out. In this case, it did mean that the lower stage had less burden, and I was planning on trying to reuse the nuclear stage. So, it would push the payload out to a transfer orbit, and then recapture itself around Earth so it could be refueled. That was the plan, anyway. Uh, we'll get to that. I decided on this uh, interesting red, gold, and black motif on the rocket, and we added some UA1563 boosters. These were boosters that were meant for the Saturn V rocket. They were never actually made, but they're like super powerful. So I decided that they would be good. We have eight of them, and we have Raptor vacuums on the core, but we're not lighting them on the surface. So those will be lit in flight. I think uh, I had nine of them. So, so it's a Raptor 9 vacuum, something like that. Uh, here it goes. The nice thing about using the SRBs, I mean, of course, the efficiency is not there, but they have a nice boot, so there is that. And these do have a thrust vector control, uh, I believe, by injecting fluid into the nozzle. It's sort of like the Titan 3 boosters. Basically, they're really big Titan 3 boosters. So here we go. And time to ignite the Raptor vacuum engines. And they have their rumble mixed in. And then, of course, once the thrust tapers off on the SRVs, we let them go. Don't need to wait until they're completely expended. They just need to be down to a certain thrust level where it'll be safe. Unfortunately, we actually bring the core into orbit this time. That was a mistake. We should have probably just deorbited it and had the payload complete orbit. I will do that on the next go around with the big red, what I call this rocket. But here we have the payload separated from the core and it does its transfer burn to Mars and the core is right there. So we sort of have to dodge it a little bit, but you know, we're pointed right at the maneuver node. So in this case, it wasn't too much of a problem. Just a little interesting sight passing by it. Unfortunately, when I separate off the payload in order to get the nuclear stage to do its burn to capture back into Earth orbit, I accidentally released the top node of the fairing decoupler, which actually contains the core. So you might see in this view the core bit, the docking port and all that, that was meant to facilitate the reuse of the nuclear stage floating by there. And as a result, we could not recapture the nuclear stage back into Earth orbit and reuse it. So we'll have to avoid that next time uh, by disabling the decoupler on the top of the fairing, uh, on the top of the fairing base, I should say. Now this is a crewed mission. We have copper spikes who wanted to go to Mars and I decided to use one of the habitat things that were part of the Mars NTP plan. So we call this one the Mars Mellow because it's sort of like a marshmallow. We are only using four boosters here because that was all it seemed would be necessary. And there's the ignition of the cores, same rocket otherwise. And eventually we get booster separation around here-ish. Off they go. 
And this time the core uses up all of its fuel and still remains in the atmosphere, so it will be disposed of and we'll use the nuclear stage to complete orbit. So there it goes. I separate off the fairing as well because we want those to come down as well. And then it's a long spool up time on the nuclear engine. We do have additional solar panels on the nuclear stage because technically it's not supposed to be a bimodal NTR, even though it is. Anyway, we'll pass on that detail. Anyway, so it finishes up orbit and we certainly have enough for the transfer out. Of course, because this stage is also meant to recapture back into Earth orbit and get itself decently low for refueling. So we coast along to the maneuver node and then we begin the burn. And so there's the pinkish purple plume of the nuclear thermal rocket engine. And then finally it separates the payload which is just this marshmallow. <laughs> it's, uh, it's got its own little tank there, not a whole lot else going on. The marshmallow only has the one crew and therefore it didn't have to be fully topped off with food, water and oxygen. It had enough for four. So that made it, that gave some room for additional fuel so that it can capture on Mars like that. Anyway, this is the recapture burn with the nuclear stage, which of course leaves us with work to do. We need to refuel the nuclear stage, and so I develop a refueler based on it. I just use the same tank, and I decided to use uh, a bunch of little, uh, I forget if they're frigate or priz engines plus one of the engines from the second stage of Proton to do the main burn to get up to the height of the nuclear stage. So we use four boosters with this big red in order to do the job, and the downside to using the Proton engine is that it only has one ignition, so that's why you have to supplement it with other engines, the frigate engines. Uh, the upside is that it is using UDMH and NTO, so it shares the same fuel as those engines as well as the S RCS system. But after the burn of the Big Red, the Big Red's core, I found that we needed too much Delta V to make orbit. So this wasn't going to survive. Uh, basically, it's just going to take too long. I mean, it has the Delta V, but it's just going to take too long for the little engines to complete orbit. Of course, if we could use the Proton engine in order to complete orbit, that'd be great. But we can't because it only has the one ignition. So I decided to replace the engines up on the stage uh, with MMH and Mon 3 engines instead. Those from my Sure Strut engine pack. Put a bunch of those with less burn time. And also added a single booster to the Big Red in order to get closer to orbit with the core. And so we have five boosters now. And there go the five boosters. So slight asymmetry, not a problem. I always like a little bit of asymmetry if we can get it. And this is the completion of the burn, so just shy of orbit as planned. And it is deorbiting, and so we can use the sure strut engines that we have on there. And they successfully complete orbit. The problem is there's not enough spare delta V to get to the high altitude of the nuclear stage, right? We has to boost up. Uh, the nuclear stage was able to get to a somewhat tighter orbit around Earth, but it's still pretty high up. So we were lacking in enough delta V. That was the end of that stream. This is the second stream for this video. And I was interested, after looking at the Atomic Rockets website, in using some more of the KSB interstellar parts. So we've got a really big photon sail there. Uh, we've got this magneto inertial fusion engine, uh, which looked really fancy and is really fancy. And I also uh, brought out whatever that is. Um, whatever it is, it's very big. It's a solar thermal power receiver, mirror receiver, something like that. Anyway, it is humongous and unfurls and looks like that. You know, which is fine and all, but I didn't think we were gonna be able to use it. Uh, we just need to deliver fuel to Mars. That's all. That's all I'm trying to do. Somebody suggested Vasimir engines, but they seemed a little bit weird to me. They needed a power source, so I put a reactor, and I also decided that since we're gonna have a reactor anyway, maybe we could put the thermal nozzle to use the reactor to provide more thrust since the Vasimir engines don't do a whole lot of thrust. Then I 
put them in this sort of generator range. Well, we need a generator to provide power for the Vasmir engines. Anyway, I decided to test them by just cheating them into space to see what kind of performance they get. Because so, I have no idea about a lot of these KSB Interstellar engines. And this one I was fond of because it looks like it's just sort of sending out. It's sort of like a mini Orion thing except no nuclear explosion. Uh, and it looks fancy. And so I decided even though it's got crazy performance and it's very advanced and everything, we'd use it once. Uh, it uses lithium out of all things. It's got a built-in fusion reactor. And again, I was just inspired by the Atomic Rockets website to do a uh, one-off sort of crazy deal here. And we we're just trying to deliver some fuel. So anyway, I decided to go with it since it looked cute, and I cooked up a new rocket. This with four Volcane 2 engines there, and then the first stage has 19 Raptor Sea Level engines. And I figured that would be enough. It just needs to get that uh, special fusion stage into orbit. The fusion stage does not have enough performance to actually launch. As far as the nuclear stage that we could be refueling at this point, I think I forgot all about it, <laughs> maybe. Um, yeah, or just let it be for the time being. I don't remember if I've ever done anything with it. Not sure. Anyway, there is the end of the core. Separation and ignition of the four Volcane 2 engines. The benefit of the Volcane 2 engines is that they have very good thrust to weight ratio and decent performance in vacuum compared to a lot of Hydrolox engines of the same size, so I decided to just go with it. And there it is, our crazy, crazy vessel with a huge engine on the tail. I mean, it's big, but it doesn't need a separate reactor at least. Sort of convenient, though not so convenient because it runs on lithium, which is weird. We could have selected a different propellant, but lithium seemed the best deal. And it is making orbit there. The thing is, it doesn't have that much delta V if you look at it. I mean, it's 9,000, but it doesn't weigh that much. So it's got very good efficiency. But as we do this burn, we'll, we're going to have this more than 3,000 meter per second burn. And then we're going to have to capture on Mars. It eventually occurs to me that we're not going to have a whole lot left. Oh, so the radiators are glowing crazy. Uh, that's... Those are thankfully graphene radiators, so they can take it. Another KSB interstellar innovation, if you will. So yeah, there's the... We had to do a correction burn because the initial burn took so long. And then this is the capture burn. And ultimately, I figured out that it just didn't have enough. It's weird because it's such an efficient engine and so advanced, but I just didn't put enough lithium, right? So I reconfigured it a little bit. And I decided to reduce the amount of propellant that we were delivering. We we're going with a very wide selection of propellants there. Eventually, we're going to need to do some supply missions to Phobium Portal and Lunar Gateway. Hopefully, we can shuffle things around. You can see that this is a completely different rocket. Uh, we decided to go with a Nova stage for some reason. So that's a whole bunch of F1 engines at the bottom. Eight of them. I don't know why. But, you know, this is what the series is all about, and half of the stuff is instigated by viewers. It is interesting to see the performance of a rocket with eight F1 engines, and then a Volcane 2 upper stage that's replacing the J2 S2 stage. So here we're basically using four Volcane engines instead of five J2s. So, a uh, bit of a curiosity there. And separating the fairing soon. There we go. And we have to shut that down shy of orbit there. Okay, so that will deorbit. And here, we did, did deliver quite a heavy load, you have to admit. So, it, it's not a bad configuration, weirdly. Here you can see how much radial we have to go in order to do this a fairly long burn with this engine because it does have a long stage time. And that's why with the other one we have to do such a big correction. But this time we clearly have much more delta V. We did the burn a little bit better this time. 
and this is on its way to Mars. So as it exits Earth SOI, I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.